Hi my friend, it's Pat Sloan here with my daily video. And so I have a fun little uh, challenge for sharing a type of quilt today, which <laughs> basically rolls off of yesterday, but I didn't do it yesterday. Um, so the yesterday was National Grilled Cheese Day, <laughs> which just sort of cracked me up. I've been looking around to see what, you know, every single day has something that it celebrates. And yesterday was Grilled Cheese Day. And if you look on your calendar, got my folder here if you look if you look on your calendar you will see I put the grilled cheese on there <laughs> you know you gotta have fun so today in honor of National Grilled Cheese Day which was yesterday I want to see quilts that have yellow in it y you know yellow yeah grilled cheese yellow so if you happen to have a quilt with a grilled cheese applique on it that would <laughs> <laughs> you would be the winner of something, I'm sure. <laughs> so I have a great yellow quilt. Now I'm on the B side of my table, which means I have zero room to manipulate or stand or do anything back here because I'm right up against the wall, but I'm going to show it to you. And I'll link you below over to the pineapple quilt. This is a pattern by Jackie Podesky, and I have her PDF on my website. Uh, so I'll link you over to that. It's a free pattern of the pineapples. So this was massively fun to do where I picked just all the yellows I could find in my stash. And then at the time there was this great, when I made this, there was this great pineapple fabric that was out. Uh, this was by Kate Spain, my buddy Kate. And so I had to have that for the backing. I love it. I love the backing as much as the front. So here is my, my yellow sunshine quilt. <laughs> so you so share a yellow quilt today. Or if you don't have a way to share it, just tell me about it in the comments here at YouTube. That'll work. That will work. And while I'm standing here, this particular panel, guess what? There's another pattern that uses it. And I did not obviously do any research when I found this panel and showed it to you. So there is a free pattern <clears throat> that uses these as like a huge center to a log cabin block it is awesome and it's done in a diagonal row here I'll, put, I'll pop the picture up so you can see so I think it's fabulous this is a gray background there's one with a white background so you could either get the pattern with the, the houses or if you like log cabins these are fabulous for log cabins I think I might do this use this for the log cabins I just think it's great I didn't look at the pattern I didn't look at it yet so I don't know if you just get one uh, you know, panel like this to do the log cabin, probably, but check, check the directions because I didn't. So I didn't do that for you today. Got to do it yourself. So I had a very uh, interesting thought, you know, like I was taking my walk, I think, and I was thinking about uh, recently, a lot of people have been saying this phrase and it just has stuck in my head and I couldn't figure out why it was stuck in my head, but here's the phrase. The phrase is, I was told to do it this way. And that just has stuck in my head. I'm like, hmm, it's something I never say. Um, I never say I was told to do something a certain way. I may have heard it was done some way. I may have been taught that and uh, used it or didn't use it. You know, I'm all for uh, looking at what you're told and seeing if that is the most efficient way to do something, effective way to do something, the best for you way to do something. Just because somebody told you doesn't mean it's the way, the only way. Because really there's nothing that's just the only way. There's multiple ways to do everything and get the same end result. I think this comes from all my software years in software development because when you do software development you have an end goal but to get from the this the beginning to that end goal like a report or a website there is a lot of ways it can be done just like art you know you have a finished log cabin quilt well there's a lot of ways you can get to being a log cabin quilt but I'll show you a better example and it it is something I think everybody can relate to <laughs> so if you want to get to the number six you can get to the number six a lot of ways. Three plus three equals six. Two plus two plus two equals six. Now somebody might come along years later and say, you know what, there's another way to get to six. 
you can do 3 plus 2 plus 1. That gives you 6. That's a different way. Years, years, years down the road, somebody else might come along and go, you know, there's still another way to get to 6. You can take 7 minus 1. You get 6. All of them end up with 6. There are different ways to get there. Uh, and I think that's key in looking when, when you are doing something, anything, any kind of task, any kind of process, uh, and you're just doing it the way you were told, uh, step out of that. Step out of that mindset. Step out of that framework and go, is this the best way for me to do this task? If you've just seen somebody else try, do it in a different way, you've seen them get the end result using a different method, you might say, hey, I'm going to try that because it might be more effective for me. It might be faster for me. It might be more fun than the way I was told. And remember, whoever told you had to learn it somewhere. And they may have heard it from a person who had been doing it the same way for 20 years, who heard it from a person who'd been doing it the same way for 10, 20 years. So what you're doing might be a method that's 60, 70, 100 years old. And it might be fine. It gets the end result. Uh, but there are often newer ways to do things, newer ways to think about things, newer tools. Imagine if none of us used a sewing machine. If you still could only make a quilt by cutting with scissors and sewing each patchwork together by hand, uh, you know, we, a lot of us wouldn't quilt. We just wouldn't. This would not be our form of entertainment. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> and there's nothing wrong. You get the same results. You get an end quilt. But uh, there's other tools now to do that. Okay. So the next time you hear yourself saying, I was told to do it that way, stop yourself. Don't say those words out loud. Stop and take a look and see, can you uh, maybe try something new? All right. And this is a segue, by the way. <laughs> We're now going to show you, we, the world we, I. <laughs> you know, the old school block of the month is released uh, today. Um, no, it was released yesterday. I'm sorry, it was re released yesterday. Uh, so I have a picture of it. It is, here it is. Here's the block. It's by Missy Carpenter of Traditional Primitives, a very good friend of mine. I've known Missy for many, many years before she even was a designer. She does lots of very traditional hand applique, lots of English paper piecing. So this is an English paper piecing project and it's divine and it is not something that will take you five minutes to do. You probably can't even do it in a day unless you devote the entire day to it. Uh, so it is something to enjoy for the month. Uh, and I want and, and 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 there's different ways to do English paper piecing. There's not one way. So if you were thinking I was told to do it this way, well maybe there's another way. Maybe there's something different you can try. So I got out my English paper piecing stuff. Okay, let's take a look because as little as I do of English paper piecing, I have a lot of stuff. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> So, so first of all, when you let's let's look down here. So first of all, when you print Missy's uh, PDF, you're gonna print it from her website. You do a checkout to get the PDF, but it's free. Um, so here is her her paper with the hexagons, and she uses a slightly smaller hexagon than I do. She tells you three fourths of an inch up here, and what that means is that is the length of this size. It is not the size of the whole unit. The whole unit is bigger, but they measure he uh, hexagons by the length. So measure your length with your ruler, whoops, uh, so that you know that your printer did it correctly. So just put your ruler on there and check it. Now I have a lot of pre-printed, uh, I mean a lot of already made hexagons, but I don't usually work with that size. So all of mine are a bit bigger, so I will either order some of that size, or I will, and I'll link you below to where you can order some uh, three four inch hexagons, or I will just use her pattern and make them. But I decided to get out some things to look at first. We'll look at the, we'll look at here in a second. We'll look, we'll look at these first. If you've been following me for a while, you've seen these. You haven't seen my hexagons for a while because I haven't made any for a while. Um, which now I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do that block. I need to get hexagons out. So here are my flowers in progress. So I have lots of pretty hexagon flowers. They're all in these wintry white and gray and red. And 
that's just a random bag. So this is this is the hexagons like sort of that are done or more done. And on this container are all my supplies. So here you go. I love this container. You know, I'm doing all these hexagons with these Christmassy uh, pieces that I collected. So I have all of these uh, little mini charms. Here are these sew tights that I was talking about the other day that we got the little base for. They're, um, they're to help hold the hexagons together. And I haven't really practiced that much with them. Here are some that are all wrapped. So here are my hexagons that are wrapped. And I use these papers that stay in. So I'm probably going to see if I can get some more of these in the smaller size. So these are papers that stay in by my friend Helen Stubbins. Here's my glue stick extras. So I have all of this stuff for th this project. Now to do Missy's, I will be using the fabrics that um, from my old school stuff. And I will do another old school. Um, I'll gather up the supplies and show you how I'm going to approach uh, making it because she gives you two options. One is to do more hexagons. One is to do less and and use um, a pretty fabric in the middle, and that's what you what you saw. But then I thought, well, what what am I? You know, I better check to be sure I don't have any three fourths ones. So this uh, this has hexagon stuff in it. Like, do I really? I mean, I don't even do hexagons very much, and I have all the whole container of stuff. I'm so excited. That's <laughs> I'm so excited. So I have a lot of the hexagons on paper. So these are the paper that you take in and you, know, you put in and you take out. And these are um, big. These are two inches on one side. So you can see how big they are. And I have, you know, one and a half, you know, so they're bigger. I have a whole package of uh, these uh, thimbles, they're called. So they're a different size. And I had done thimbles for a while I had done these. I de did one block and then I decided I just didn't want to do any more of those. I have some big hexagons here and look at this one. Even bigger. And like I have these is like treasures. I haven't looked in here in so long. Here's some more from uh, Helen. So these are bigger still though. I don't have any of the smaller ones because I just don't work in that size. And more, more and more, because these all stay in. So they're not reusable like the paper. The paper are reusable. These ones stay in. And then my friend Jane has these templates, and my Jane, friend Jane in Australia. So she'd given me her templates to draw my own. So this was like a treasure hunt. I was so excited to go through here and find all this. Um, <laughs> but I'm excited to do her block and I'm not going, you know, you're, you're not going to see me in two days with this block up here. So I'm going to look and see how quickly I can get some papers because I'd rather have those than, um, than cut them up. I don't know. I just do. A single piece of paper is a little, you know, flimsy to take out. The pre-made papers are firmer. You know, so like if you're doing this, you might do two layers. She gives you instructions, two layers of um, you know, freezer paper to make them, uh, or keeps them firmer. When you get cardboard ones, they are, you know, they are pretty firm. So like you can see, and these will be reused. So these ones, if you're using the cardboard, will, re will be reused. Uh, and Missy, I think, has some videos too. So you can go to her website and look around. And if you've never done English paper piecing and you, and uh, you are working on this. There are some ways to do uh, mock, I would call them mock English paper piecing, where you could take the hexagons and you could just fuse them down and stitch over them. You know, raw edge and uh, have, you could either applique the edges with a straight stitch or a blanket stitch, um, something like that. So if you wanted to still experience the look of the block but not do turned under edges, you could play around with that method. Lots of ways to get to the same end result. <laughs> so that is it. We have fun things and the little challenge to show your yellow quilt and to look at things a little differently when you see something that's done uh, uh, in a way that you are not familiar with doing it. Okay? Links are down below. You can hop over to, um, to the link to get Missy, Missy's download. So I love you. Mwah. See you online.